hour presented by the National Bible College Satellite Bible School Welcome to the Bible Hour program we are studying book of Romans a wonderful book it enlightens and open many of the eyes of the our spiritual inner man this book of Romans opening our eyes enlightening our spiritual eyes to understand God's righteousness today we are going to understand about the relationship between God and man sometime many religions in the world they teach God is a super being and we are the slaves is the Christianity teach the same not at all what Christianity says about a relationship between God the creator and the human being the creature it is a wonderful truth when one understand this truth clearly they can enjoy the blessings of that relationship there is a sonship given as a relationship between God the creator and the human being what a great blessing what a great privilege so let us listen the word of God and understand and enjoy and experience the sonship in Jesus Christ today the word of God is going to be preached by the man of God dr. Peter Solomon the academic president of the National Bible College namaskar very good morning I welcome all of you to the satellite Bible school I'm so grateful to God for this morning it's a bright morning may the Lord open your heart and give you understanding of the Word of God I'm going to continue my lesson from the book of Romans chapter 8 today we are going to learn about sonship God invite all men on the face of the world to be his sons and daughters Christianity is a religion of no slavery it's a religion of sonship sons and daughters in some other religion you will see people are far from God and his fellowship people are described in the religion they are the slaves to God Islam believes they are a slave to God they are surrendered to God but Christianity is a religion of sonship father and son have a quality of life a joy of life a beautiful life the reason because you are being led by the Holy Spirit now your life being run by the law of the spirit of life the new law is activated in your life therefore your character being changed your understanding being changed you come very close to God slave cannot come close to the father a son can come and lean on the father's chest because you are a son you can be admitted in the home in the bed in the dining table in everywhere wherever father there you can this is the relationship that takes place in the sonship of God let us go to Roman chapter 8 verse 14 for as many as are led by the Spirit of God these are please mark it down sons of God how we become sons of God because we are led by the Spirit of God we are no longer under the law of sin and death now the law of the spirit and life rules in our heart we have peace with God therefore we are sons of God when you go back in the Old Testament time book of Genesis chapter 7 verse 7 so Noah please underline and his sons and wives went into the ark because of the waters of the flood when Noah entered into the ark God also blessed his sons 
it was noah was justified by faith he was found grace of god nevertheless god blessed noah by bringing his sons also into the ark nevertheless god blessed noah also his sons so that they may enter into the ark when father is blessed his sons are blessed this is what taking a transformation in our christian family as many as who received jesus christ as the lord of your life you will have a right authority to become the children of god john chapter 1 verse 12 since we are led by the spirit therefore we are called sons of god when god created adam in the garden of eden he was his son because of his disobedience and sin and death he left god and left his fellowship now in christ the new law the spirit and life you have been called back to the fellowship of god and you can entertain yourself as a son and daughter let's read roman chapter 8 verse 15 for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out abba and father the word abba it's a hebrew word it means father but very closely dearly to address the father you can call abba the same word appears in many languages particularly in tamil language father is called appa the same thing abba you see the father become very close to the son therefore he can call abba please turn with me to book of genesis chapter 22 verse 2 then he said take your son please mark it in your bible take your son number 2 your only son isaac number 3 whom you love here god describe isaac as a son only son and you love him so much this is what happened in christ that we all can be a beloved sons of god what a great status it is in the religious point of view all people around the world in every religion whoever pleases god and whoever call upon god they cannot call god abba they can call god anything they want because they have no relationship they never belong to the house of god a christian have a right to call god abba and father that's the reason jesus taught the prayer to his disciples our father what in heaven god being addressed as your father you see the difference this is what christianity is roman chapter 8 verse 16 the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of god you see you have a spirit in that you breathe and live in the physical body beside that god also send his spirit through that spirit only you can cry god abba and father the spirit which came from above dwells in our heart witness that you are a child of god in this world there are two kinds of sons that they can enjoy the fellowship of the father one is a child born naturally he is a son to the father the second one is a son can be adopted legally 
and he can have a father. Even this adopted son have every right like the naturally born son. Everything the father gives him. That's what happened in Christianity. Everyone who believe in Jesus Christ and obeyed that form of doctrine and to the teachings and obey the gospel receives the Holy Spirit and the forgiveness of sin and they can call God a born father and God being the father you being the son of course we are not naturally born sons to God but we are adopted we have been received the adoption let us look into the scripture Romans 8 verse 15 for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear but you received the spirit look into the scripture adoption by whom we cry out Abba and Father the word Abba it's a Hebrew word very much used even in the Aramic language. Abba. It's an adoption. In the kingdom of God, everyone who believes in Christ, he will be an adopted son of God to the Father in heaven. This is the great and grandest status that you enjoy in Christianity. My dear brother and sister in Christ, you may be a slave, you may not be acknowledged, you will be for a place, you have been disturbed by anybody or someone, come and receive this adoption. If you walk by the Spirit, you can be the sons of God. If you receive the Spirit, you will be adopted as a son, you can call God Abba and Father. Verse 17 is very important. And if children, then herds, herds of God, and joint hands with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. You see, in a family, if you suffer, there is time to suffer. When they all enjoy, there is time to enjoy. So today, as a son of God, if you suffer, like Christ suffered on the cross, afterwards Christ was glorified, you can also be glorified. Remember, when you are adopted as a son in the family of God, you become a heir of God. You know, in the community, when parents die, the children go to the revenue office and get a legal heir certificate. That means the certificate proves the deceased man or woman whatever they have, the riches, whatever they left, it belonged to the children because children are the heirs of the parents. That is how today in the world we collect all our belonging by proving that we are the heirs of that particular man, particular deceased person. So God calls you not only a son, but you are also a heir. You are right to enjoy everything that God possesses in heaven. You can claim everything. You can receive everything. God blesses you as your soul liveth today. You can also live in your body. As your soul being blessed, be blessed on your body. You can enjoy everything what God has for you, stored for you. We are the heirs of God. Like Abraham left things to Isaac, Isaac left to things to Jacob. So family by family, we receive everything because we are the heirs of God. So also we receive everything through Jesus Christ our Lord coming into the family of God and receive every prosperity for our life. 
you know sometime when some people look at you they may not recognize you belong to the family of god they may see that you are untouchable they cannot look at you you are so poor poverty stricken diseased outcast your smell is horrible but god sees you you are a son adopted one you are a heir of god you know the butterfly we always amazed and fascinated to see when it's flying what a multi color it has millions of colors on their wings how beautifully they are flying you know before it become a butterfly it took three different stages in the first stage it's kind of a egg you never distinguish it is a butterfly egg then it become a small worm like larva then it start growing under a cover called pupa then one fine day it blossoms out a fine tiny beautiful silkish butterfly fly half when you notice the very beginning you never see or never notice a butterfly in a small egg you never see in a larva stage like a worm you never see a butterfly there at the stage of pupa you never see a butterfly there that's what going to happen to you and me those who are the sons of god we may live here like a small egg unnoticed you may be live like a worm like a larva here you may be like a small pupa kicked by the foot of the people but one day is coming when christ comes on his second mission when you hear the trumpet all those who are hidden will fly off and we will meet the lord in the mid air this is what happens to the sons of god because you are a heir to receive every blessing because you are promised in jesus christ verse 18 for i consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us this is what the illustration talks about you know the butterfly how it's coming out so at the moment we may not outwardly seen what we are today we are under the pressure of suffering we undergo every trials and temptation but the day will come and you will be open out of the pupa uh, you will be receiving a glorious body you can fly to the mid air verse 19 chapter 8 for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of god there will be a day coming around the world perhaps millions of faithful people who walk by the spirit and overcome this world by the law of the spirit of life they are going to be revealed and they will be lifted up in the mid air this is what the bible promises for you and me was 21 because the creation itself also will delivered from the bondage of corruption into a glorious liberty of the children of god for we know that the whole creation groans and labors with the pangs together until now not only that we are also who have the first fruit of the spirit even we ourselves groan with him ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption of the redemption of our body so every christian walk by the spirit he put his body under the control 
of Jesus Christ under the law of life and spirit. Now, when time comes, our groaning, our crying and our suffering will be over. We will be shown in the world that we are the children of God and we will be flying into the midair to meet our Lord. What a glory it will be. What a joyous day it will be. What a glorious sight it will be, my dear brothers and sisters. This is what the change that takes place as the sons of God in Jesus Christ. There is no condemnation. Now there is a glory is waiting for you. May the Lord bless this study and give you a great hope of waiting for God as a son and a heir in the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Most heavenly loving Father, we thank you for the future plan that we are no more just a people in this world, but we are the heirs and sons of God. We also look for the glory, leaving the suffering and be with you. Bless all our listeners and I pray this thing in Christ's holy name. Amen. Good morning viewers. Thank you for watching my beloved television program. Each day you have been blessed to watch this program's expository sermons from the book of Romans. Well, from the beginning, God dealt with man, man's problem that is sin. God provided many ways to escape from sin. Especially in the Old Testament, he gave sacrifices. In the Old Testament, the relationship between God and Israel was like husband and wife relationship. It was like master and slave relationship. But in the New Testament, through our Lord Jesus Christ, the total relationship was changed. No more master and slave relationship, but a new relationship. What was that relationship? That's what we have studied today. That's what the theme of Book of Romans. Now, the question from today's lesson is, what is our relationship with God in Christ? Let me repeat the question. Please take down and then write the correct answer. What is our relationship with God in Christ? Please look into the Bible, select proper verse and write the correct answer. Definitely you will receive good prizes. We also have church products like communion trays, offertory bags, pulpits, etc. Please write to us your doubts, queries and your opinions about this lesson. Until we meet again, I leave you all under God's care. To contact Dr. Peter Solomon, number 58 Church Street, Kumaran Nagar, Chennai 6000082, cell number 093-855-00882, 07-010-603433-34 and 35. Amen.